The smartphone. You know what it is. You probably have one. You might be watching this video on one right now. Perhaps you don't give it much thought. It has become rather ubiquitous in recent times. It's become so common, it's almost not even worth looking at. But I think that given a little bit of historical context, the smartphone becomes something rather interesting. Though you probably think of the iPhone as being the first smartphone, the true first smartphone came out in 1993. It was the IBM Simon. Now, it wasn't really what we call a smartphone. Its flagship feature? Faxes. Yeah, faxes. Uh, but it was the first smartphone. What could it do? Well, it could send emails, it could send pages. Yeah, those kinds of pages, like from the 90s. And faxes. But seriously, who wants to send faxes? Now, if that wasn't really what we call the first smartphone, then surely the first iPhone was the first smartphone, right? Well, not really. Something tells me that if you grabbed that first iPhone from 2007 and you grabbed it, you probably wouldn't say it was much of a smartphone to our standards. So, where did the smartphone really become smart? Well, people would probably give you all kinds of answers. Faster processors, faster internet, video games, calculators, reminders, personal assistants, memes, porn. But I think it's something else. Consider what your phone or your computer can do the moment you plug it in. Well, strictly speaking, it can do just about anything, but it won't. To get it to do those things, you have to connect it to the internet. Once you do, you've got everything at your fingertips. A personal assistant, the weather, calculator, curing cancer, video games, memes, porn, all of it. But if you tried doing all those things, you need the internet. And most of the things that don't need the internet, you probably had to download them from the internet. And if you didn't, you probably installed them using a DVD. Now, your smartphone doesn't have a DVD player, so it relies on the internet. And that's where something unique to the smartphone comes in, the app. The app is, in my humble opinion, what really made the smartphone smart. Consider the iPhone again. Just about any idea Apple didn't have, we could rest assured someone else would. Cool looking clocks, interactive calendars, reminders, spreadsheets, word processors, and lots and lots of porn. The, the idea is that someone that wasn't around for the development of neither the hardware nor the software of a device is making an app that works on a aforementioned device. I think that's powerful. And the more we appreciate that feature, the smarter our phones will be. The number one problem with using, say, a third-party reminders app is that if you try to set a reminder using your personal assistant, Siri, Cortana, OK Google, it's always going to default to the stock reminders app, not the third-party one. What if that changed? What if you asked your phone to play a song on, say, Spotify, and it listened? It didn't play it on the stock app. It played it on the third-party app. To me, that's more powerful. The idea of the consumer being able to mold the operating system of a device to work around a program that was developed by, for all we know, some guy out of his mom's basement, and yet that program wasn't even around when the operating system was developed? That is really powerful. And I think that's what's going to make the next generation of smarter smartphones. Thanks for watching. My name is Nicholas Suter, and I'm 15 years old.